What's up, nerdlings? What is up, nerdlings? Do you nerd for pickups? This is Tom and Lacey, collecting all the things, searching from here to there, finding comic book tables, house Legos, and action figs, retro gaming, amiibos, and image prints. Watch as they collect them all. Tom and Lacey collecting right now. Yes, welcome to the Do You Nerd Midwest Gaming Classic 2021 Pickups video. I am Tom. This is the lovely Lady Lacey. And we had so much fun at MGC with so many people. Oh my gosh. An amazing weekend that went by way too fast. But that's a whole other video. <laughs> right now we are focused on all the awesome and weird very weird stuff <laughs> we found at MGC. So let's jump right in. Uh, you know, first of all, you, you got to rock some merch from fellow content creators. So we got the Richard W. sticker, basically a seal of approval, telling us he nerds. And got a Square Pegs sticker. Always love getting stickers from content mm -hmm. creators. I mean, there's always so much stuff you can do with them, just like the one from Super Nintendo, and even a button from Super Nintendo. So again, awesome pieces of merch. We got some big old stickers from Hair of the Dog cast and Raw Dogs. Oh, look at uh, look at Pikachu. Oh, oh, he's had a little too much PBR. <laughs> Maybe he needs some PB and J shots. Oh <laughs> yeah, well that that could be another video too. <laughs> now this is not a sticker, but just a fun little business card from Geeks by the Creek. So love picking up stuff like this too, having it handy. That way you've got all their information to check them out. And even though he wasn't there, my girl JLove81 hooked me up with a discard sticker. Now I can collect what I love in style because clearly us and discard are only ever going to go to separate <laughs> conventions and never actually get to meet. Are you doing it? Are you collecting what you love right now? You should do it. You should definitely do it. And it's not a sticker or a business card, but we do have the Retro Mikey 78 dust sleeve, very similar to his standard dust sleeve, except this is the Midwest Gaming Classic Edition. Special edition. But it wasn't just content creators. I mean, MGC itself had merch they did first and foremost they mm -hmm. had some shirts now this shirt was a con specific shirt you had to buy prior to the convention it was not sold at the convention it's the only one that's got the date on it so that's kind of cool and then they had a bunch of other shirts that they sell yearly and everything and they changed the design up they use this one at the bottom of all their emails and so i knew if they had this milwaukee one i definitely wanted it because it's got a bunch of fun stuff in there some mario some the fonz e hey. just a bunch of really fun milwaukee type things that are like you know quintessential and then two different fun colors That's and then of course they had lanyards you could purchase so they had again multiple colors but i liked my yellow and the blue midwest gaming classic and then I got a Midwest Gaming Classic 2020, since that was the first year we were <laughs> supposed to be there. They didn't have a 2021 pin, or I would have bought that one. They had a bunch of other years, but I was like, nope. Funny you should mention uh, 2020, because even though this is not put out by Midwest Gaming Classic, our buddy Chris over at Video Game Dust Sleeves had made some MGC 2020 dust sleeves. He had sent those to me for 2020 to pass out to people, but 2020 didn't happen. So we just carried them over to this year. And I mean, hey, now they're collector's items, you yeah. know. I passed these out to people, but I did hang on to two of them. One is for us that we got signed and oh man, filled up the whole back, yeah, had to go along the front, even Sides. on the spine. And the other is for you, Chris, since you weren't there with us. We got it signed hey, for you. guess what? This time we remember to sign it. Hey, how about that? <laughs> Had a, a little snafu before. We got so many signatures on a Mo Game Con sleeve, sent it off to Chris, and he's like, wait, guys, I think you forgot something. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. So those are great. And uh, a huge shout out to everyone who was signing sleeves. Really, really do appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time. Thanks. I'm glad you came along partner all right not quite gaming related but it is retro 
So I got a cute little twink and Rainbow Bright Kitty, which I didn't know Rainbow Bright had a kitty. I guess I didn't get that far into the cartoon or something. I don't know, but these were adorable. Loved them. So you know how much I love my buttons. Oh my God. Look at that kitty cat. Little... I didn't know there was a cat. I love her so much. They actually had a whole they slew of those to choose from. Just a bunch of just fun 80s pins that just brings you right back to your childhood. Show me what you got first. Show me. <laughs> <laughs> and some gaming ones too because i believe i saw some final fantasy there were ones some final there, fantasy which ones. i the, was tempted to grab those they were neat because they were in the sprite form they weren't right. in, they weren't in the good like concept art design they were in like the game sprite form look what i got <laughs> and i also got this really weird little rubber ducky because i've started collecting these for some reason and i just really like this like one-eyed horned rubber ducky and just a note on the rubber ducky the funny thing is ever since we've been together you've collected rubber ducks yeah which i, I find <laughs> i find that funny because she's collected them this whole time and in recent years we finally started to see that there's a more collectible market with like what are they the tubs yeah line? yes so that's uh, that's kind of kind of neat it's, it's just funny because i don't like taking baths i like showers so i don't know why i like that rubber duckies <laughs> Maybe I'll just give myself a bath right here. There were plenty of games to choose from, and first of all, I was glad to see a lot of Sega Master System games. I feel like you just don't see them enough. Of course, that convention is the best place to find it. I went for Lord of the Sword. Look at that pretty boy on the cover. <laughs> he looks like a cross between Robin Hood and Link. <laughs> Robin Link, Robin Lincoln Link. Hood. <laughs> Lincoln Hood, I like that. Now, I don't have any experience with this game. Looking at the screens on the back, it very much reminded me of kind of a Zelda 2. So I'm hoping that this will be good. But I didn't leave the Genesis out because I went with Art Alive, a drawing and animation program for your Sega Genesis system. The thing that drew me to this was I was thinking kind of like Mario Paint, and I'm not sure if you can actually use that Sega Genesis mouse or not. Well, we'll give it a shot. We'll see if that's the case or not. I was thinking that it might say on the back and I didn't see anything there. Although it does say, it's simply the easiest way to be an artist. Create masterpieces that run, jump, dance. You can even tape them on your VCR. <laughs> okay. Love it. And again, complete cartridge in very great shape. I can't imagine people put too many hours into this. And then the manual in there too. So there you go. Sega. <laughs> that was a good start. So we'll, we'll ignore that. Well, I actually got a game. Well, I didn't get the game. It was given to us. Jen of JLove81, the sweetheart that she is, picked this up for us because she knew that we wanted to go get this because we meant to get it at Siege, but we forgot to go back to his booth. And so I told her, I said, I want to go get it this time. So she ran over there and snuck and got it for us because we, she claimed that we were her taxi the whole time. And it's like, we barely got the car up, but we did pick her up from the airport. So she claims that this is payment for it. And we told her she didn't need she's, to. She's ridiculous. But we are super excited to do this, uh, to do the challenges for this. We're going to do a quick unboxing video later to show you all the fun stuff that's in this thing. Cause there's some neat stuff in this thing. <laughs> We're going to get into that a little later. In fact, maybe a closer upper unboxing. Yeah, that was one of the things that you were most excited about this. Once you saw all the other oh, things yeah. in there, you're like, as far as I'm concerned, the games are the bonus. Yeah. <laughs> 
but uh, it does look like some fun games to try. I hear good things about Awesome P. Yes, so stay tuned. I picked up a Super Nintendo game. This is actually a gift for our buddy Peter of Waves and Games. So if this video comes out before I give it to him, sorry I spoiled your surprise. But if it comes out afterwards, then hey, look, it's that copy of Illusion of Gaia I found for you. There were a handful of games that Peter asked me to keep an eye out for, and as soon as I saw this, I had to get it. Illusion of Gaia is an action RPG for the Super Nintendo that stars one of the many red-haired protagonist characters. This is an RPG by Enix. It's part of the Quintet Trilogy, which aren't exactly a trilogy of games. But regardless, this is a gorgeous, drop-dead gorgeous RPG. And the music, it is amazing. It is almost haunting at times. It's a fairly linear story, but it is a lot of fun to play. They uh, bring a lot of fantasy elements into kind of historical things. You visit things like the Nazca Plains. You visit the pyramids. I mean, the Great Wall of China, Angkor Wat. All boss fights rely on a certain amount of skill and pattern memorization rather than strategy, and not being able to grind forces trial and error to succeed in these situations. Though some boss fights were just awful to get through, like those vampires that I could just rant all day long about, others were extremely easy and made the game feel unbalanced at times. You're globe trotting, you're saving the world, and now so too will Peter Bateman. It was like, no, oh, I dropped you, I'm driving. Speaking of Jen, I got another pickup from her because she uh, showed me these at a table. They are little like toppers that go on top of your Pepsi like 20 ounce bottles. And they were like little promotional items and there was a ton of them. And she was super excited because she said she'd seen them online but she'd never seen them anywhere because they were exclusive in Japan. So this was really hard to narrow down which ones we wanted to get. <laughs> so hard to decide. I know, which one to get? Because I really did want to get one of each, but you know, I knew we didn't have the space for that, so I just picked out the ones that I really, really liked. Honestly, I think my favorite ones would probably be the little blue Goomba. I think that was yours too. Oh yeah, I had to have him. He looked awesome. And I just, I don't know, I like the cheap, cheap too. It's just really <laughs> cute. I like the detail that even the different blocks are, are different. They're not just all on a question mark block or, you know, one of the breakable blocks. They're all different. Yeah, a lot of thought actually went into these because not only are they retaining that 8-bit sprite design, but that transfers down into the bottle yes. cap topper itself. So I believe these would just sit on the bottle yeah. cap, but they have like a fun 8-bit design to them. Like they're the bottle cap themselves. So I thought that was very, very clever. And these are great collectible pieces. They're nice, small, low-profile things. And you can have a lot of fun, you know, finding different places to set them up in your game room or wherever. Pepsi Nintendo Holiday Game, where you could win one of thousands of terrific Nintendo prizes, like these action sets. Well, uh, this one isn't going to go to a convention and not come home with one or two plushies. Nope, it was plushie hype all weekend long. In fact, I think that's what I spent the majority of my money <laughs> on. This one is like sort of a plushie. It's a squishy, plushy bag. But there was just something about this one that was just so cute. You've got him like kind of just sitting there and his ears and his tail, but his tail is a zipper pull for a, like a little coin purse or something. And I like the, the little detail on the back where it's just blank, but you still have like that hand on there. There was just something about it that I was just like, that is super cute and I have to have that. Oh, like a roadkill Pikachu. Well, yeah, he's a little, he's a little squished. <laughs> like I said, he's kind of a plushie. <laughs> At that same booth, I picked up another squished <laughs> plushie. The seller called it a seat cushion. I just thought it was super cute. We've been doing a lot of slime collecting lately anyway. <laughs> So he was just, he's really nice. So now I can, you know, take a nap anytime I want to. Yeah, I just want to throw this out there. So I grew up as a Dragon Warrior Dragon Quest fan. She's not played any of the games, but when I introduced her to the slimes, oh, it was over. She loves them. So it just goes to show guys and gals, even if there's something that your uh, significant other or partner, even if they don't play the game or anything, there's still maybe something for them in there. Ding, ding. Ring, 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 ring. 
game over slime. Now there was a booth that had a couple of things that really caught our eye. Yes. Uh, why don't you start with your green friend there? I picked me up a lovely little Tonberry. Now his name is very hard for me to remember, so I like to call him the uh, Stabby Lantern guy. Mm. <laughs> I've seen him before, and I've I've never encountered him in a game yet. But I just really love him, and I think he's really cute. Now you said he's scary in the game, didn't you? Well, yeah, because he kills you quick. He's got a lantern and a like a like a butcher's knife here going on. But I just thought that was really cute. And I like it because he's actually pretty solid for a plushie and he's got some hard soles on his shoes so he'll stand up pretty well. Now I like how uh, how like soft and fuzzy he himself is, but then his his cloak and hood, it's not quite as rough and scratchy as a canvas but it's, it's near that. So like mm -hmm. he's still very cuddly because it's still a very soft material, but it has that canvas look and you can put his hood yeah, down. Yeah, which is a nice touch. I so like that. that is really cool. And of course his lantern, it does swing around. So it's not just totally held in place. <laughs> the other thing I picked up from there is a Kektar. And they had a big version about this size, but there was just something about the smaller one I liked. <laughs> I liked the coloring and like, you could really see the striping in it. And, you know, I thought maybe I could hang it off of a backpack or something. But he's just cute. He's like wearing a wing. Now, while she's finding all of these awesome plushies, there was even something that caught my eye. And that would be Wispy Woods. <laughs> Look at this guy. How many times do you find a tree plushie? Oh, it is great. <laughs> so this is a nice firm plushie. It does stand up on its own and it's so, so soft, both on the tree part and the leaves and everything. Uh, the apples, they do not come off, which is probably a good thing. There is a <laughs> hook if you want to hang him, but I mean, he looks so cool just standing up. I did pick this up from a different booth, but Everybody knows my favorite game is Dr. Mario. So <laughs> I found a Dr. Mario plush and I was super excited about it. The booth that actually had this one had the um, germ plushies, but someone got to those before I did. So yeah, Dr. Mario. Dr. Mario was like, take this pill, you'll feel better. So love it. He's got some great detail too in that uh, his little tie that's tucked yeah, away in there. Yeah, you can see in there. Yeah, you can actually pull that out. So if he's yeah. a little more casual, Dr. Mario. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just pull that out. So <laughs> yeah. But I really like that. Just little touches like that. And I do like how his like reflector mirror actually is kind of shiny. So that's, that's kind of a neat touch too. And then one more plushie that I got is the Wiggler. I've been eyeballing this one off of Amazon for a while now. And when I saw it, I was like, yep, going home with it. Love the Wiggler. There's just something about him. I, I like the Wiggler in the game. They're just so happy as they're walking along. And then I just think it's a little floppy. Like everything about him is just floppy. Oh yeah, they're all happy as they're walking along until you jump on them and turn them red. Well, then they get mad. We definitely... Did a nice variety of our, you know, we got some Final <laughs> Fantasy, some Kirby, some Pokemon, some Mario, some Dragon Warrior. We're just, you know, we're making sure we represent it in the plushie department. Something I am a sucker for at conventions is oddball stuff. <laughs> Honestly, I really don't even know what this is. It kind of looks like a Super Game Boy. The gentleman that I spoke to said, essentially, this is like a game pack that you would download a game onto, and then you'd be able to play it on your system. So it could be a surprise what game is on here. We'll see. Again, I just, I love quirky stuff like this. Speaking of quirky, let me tell you, I don't think it can get much quirkier than this. So first of all, it's complete. It's got the sleeve. Obviously, it's got the booklet and the disc is in there. Mm, case, mm, jewel cases, who cares, right? This is a CDI game. <laughs> the Wacky World of Miniature Golf with Eugene Levy. Now, if you look at the back of this thing, oh, it looks awful. There's no chance that this game is actually going to be fun. This has got to be 
super cheesy, Seriously, just a terrible go game. Play golf with a shark. I guess so. And Eugene Levy. I mean, it's the freaking dad from American Pie. It, like in a cartoony golf game for <laughs> an obscure gaming system. Well, that was a fun day, wasn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, how how can you resist stuff like that? It's just weird. How many of you have this in your collection? You know, that, that says it all, really. <laughs> I like weird stuff. Hey, greetings, putters. I'm Rollo the Goofball. <laughs> I mean, golf ball. Welcome to Wacky Golf, the miniature golf theme park that picks up where the other golf courses leave off. Well, I found something that's not quite gaming related, but it is a ball cap from Star Trek The Experience at the Hilton, and it is from opening day, the maiden voyage with the start date of 010498. I loved going to this in its heyday. It has since pretty much, it's all closed down now. It's gone. And the casino barely has anything left in it, but I used to love going here. I, I would go there every time I went to Vegas. I got to show you like the remnants of what yeah, was there. Yeah, I think I got to see a doorway arch. But so much fun with the rides. The Quark's Bar restaurant was amazing. It was just really cool walking down the DS9 promenade. I'm glad you got your hat. I'm just sad I'll never get a Warp Core Breach. Oh man, 19 different alcohols. Amazing. So, yeah, it's in a really good shape It too. is in a really good shape. I feel like somebody didn't even wear it. They just bought it. Kind of like I do. I buy ball caps and then I never wear them. <laughs> oh, you should totally wear that whenever you uh, record your captain's log. Maybe. Captain's log, start a 23.9, round it off to the nearest decimal point. Well, pretty sure we don't make it any secret at all, but our wedding was a little bit Pac-Man themed. There was a booth that had all kinds of fun, old Pac school Pac-Man merch, and we picked up a couple of items. I got the Pac-Man two challenging puzzles piece. So basically you've got a tray, you've got a bunch of little pieces that you have to try to form into Pac-Man. Uh, I don't know if there are any rules to it. The back of the box is blank. I know, but... it sounds easy, but it probably isn't. Uh, yeah, probably not. <laughs> But uh, maybe you can set up like time limits or something and, and tell someone if they don't put it together, well, uh, peanut butter and jelly shop. No. I would feel like people would not put it together. Yeah, no, wait, wait, scratch that. <laughs> and we also picked up this really adorable little Pac-Man candy dispenser. It definitely needs to be cleaned up. I don't think it works. I think one of the gear in there is broken so it doesn't spin the candy dispenser part inside there. So I don't know if we'll actually be able to use it. But, you know, we loved the, the history part of it. Now, on day two of the convention, at the same booth that we found the Pac-Man stuff, the gentleman there put out some new things. This one immediately came over, got my attention. We went up to him and I said, you know, uh, I'm interested in those. We, we spent some money at your booth the day before, and I'd like to spend some more money if the price is right. We worked out a deal and got the old school little Nintendo toy trophy pieces so these are super fun we got link here uh, i believe he's missing the bat or keys but you've got like the sticker in the background with the legend of zelda logo which is cool everything else about them looks to be in really good shape so you've got that base you've got the backboard and it still has the stickers on here i love this it has yeah. a place for the name the date and your high score so, you know, you put that on there and boom, there's your trophy. And we got picked up a Mario one. I love that the bullet bill is orange. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I honestly don't know if he's missing anything. But there's a lot of really good detail in here. Like, you look at the back and you can see the castle and everything. But when you look down at the bottom, you see the little mushrooms and the castle door entrance. I mean, it is really, really cool. And it's actually really heavy. That plastic, I mean, it's a solid, hefty plastic. So I was really excited to see these because we never see these intact. This is great. And mine also has the two stickers on it with all it has on here is the initials, but no date or high score, but that's pretty awesome. Oh, they must've been thinking that they were going to get that high score. <laughs> what do you know? I beat my high score. I also picked up a game, but it's not the kind of game you're thinking. It's the board game. This looked really, really cool. Wonder Woman Challenge of the Amazons. I was looking it over and I really like the games that have like details in them. This was something that has some really neat tokens to them. They're actual figures. And I was like, wow, it's only 10 bucks. I'm totally going after this. So I look forward to giving this game a shot. 
Now I found a couple of manuals. I bought this one. It is for Pinball Jam on the Atari Lynx. <laughs> I don't care about Pinball Jam. It has Elvira on it. <laughs> End of story. That's the only reason I got it. And I also got something for Bandana, a little bit of a gift. If he's interested, he may not be, and I absolutely understand. It is the manual for Castlevania II Simon's Quest. I believe it is intact. Unfortunately, someone has written passcodes all over this thing, even on the inside where it has scores. I got this for him if he wants it. If not, I get it. You want something pristine, but uh, I'll, I'll still let you know the passcodes and, and you can cheat your way through the game. Well, speaking of gifts, we found our good buddy Sega Head a gift. We found him a Sonic lunchbox. Now, if he already has this one, too bad. Now you've got two. <laughs> <laughs> now, Kane has one. Kane has one. Actually, I know exactly what he'll say. He'd say, no, he won't. I'll keep one in my room, and I'll take one to work. <laughs> you Bye, phone. Take two. Now at a convention, we love our art prints, and any convention you go to, you're gonna find something super, super cool. So, so many great artists. Like right here, we've got Felicia from Darkstalkers, and look how freaking cute she is. It is kind of a pinup pose. She's you know, very revealing. I mean, she's always been a very revealing character. But there was something that really drew you into this one. Yes. So the blue hair was the first thing I noticed. Then it was the cat thing. But then you, more you look at it, it's like, she's got freckles. How adorable are the freckles? And at the same booth, something just for you. Bye, And this is another very oh, I know. adorable one. I love one. how cutesy and like button nosy she's got going on there. And I, the thing that I love about this is the proportions are right. I hate when people try to give somebody too big of boobs or too big of thighs just because they're trying to be appealing. And it's like, that's not, Spider Gwen is very lanky and, you know, athletic bod. So I liked it. We found another fun artist that had uh, some great pieces like Princess Rudo here. Looking very sultry. I think she's going to make Link follow up on that promise to marry her. Oh. Well, with a body like that, why not? And I couldn't resist the <laughs> classic 90s X-Men cartoon scene where Rogue is facing off against Apocalypse in the most suggestive way ever. Plus, you know, 90s cartoon Rogue. I'm uh, waiting for you to put your face on that. How, how many... How many crushes were out there for <laughs> That's great, though. <laughs> I picked up some retro toys to go with some new toys that I have. The original versions of the Clicky Head Power Rangers. I have recently picked up the new versions of them, so I thought, hey, why not have the fun original ones? And so I picked up my two favorite characters, Kimberly and Tommy. Nice, fine, nice, fine. Dang. And there's some yellowing, especially on uh, Tommy's white bits that he's got going on there. The one thing I noticed that they did on these, which I like a little bit better than the modern toys, is they seem a little bit better proportioned. That's what I was thinking. They don't have these big bulbous chests on them, but they also don't flip quite as well as the other ones. Like these, it only flips the one time where now you can flip it, and the other ones you could flip it and flip it and flip it. No. But that's okay. So now I've got the old and the new. Listen, do you want to get together with some of us after school? You know, nothing major, just hang out at the youth center? Yeah, that sounds cool. Okay. I found myself a wonderfully cute little wallet. We love our Uncharted. And I actually considered using this because it's nice and round so it would fit in the back pocket pretty well. And it's got the nice little pirate skull on the front of it. But the part that I knew would draw his attention, it's got the coin in there. Yes. How cool is that? We love our coins. If you watch any of our Renfair videos, and it's a nice, like, well-worn, and it's a, a decent, hefty coin. I mean, it's it's a metal coin. It's really cool. When I bought it, the, I told the girl that I was considering using it. She goes, I thought about using it, too, but then I thought, I don't want to lose the coin. I was like, well, if I ever did use it, I would probably take the coin out. <laughs> hey, so. we, we've got a treasure chest to keep the coin in if you ever want to. Nathan Drake that two-bit thief. 
risking it all for some piece of treasure. Something else that was really neat, everybody was buying these. It's one of those convention things that I don't know if I'll ever be able to use again, but because everybody was buying them in there and walking around with them, you didn't feel silly with them. I got a light up name tag and you can literally make this say whatever you want. There's a program that they give you that you can download onto your computer and you can change the font, you can change the speed, you can change what it does. And they had a bunch of different colors. I chose the green one. Jen and Linda got one and they got them in their favorite colors. I think even 8-Bit Glitch got one. I tried to get this guy to get one, but he's like, nah. I'm lame. Oh, well, they're fun. So we didn't get badges at this convention. And I was like, well, now I have a badge. Can I see a badge? He, yeah. likes, the badge. he likes the badge. It wouldn't be a Lacey pickup without some kind of dragon something. <laughs> I thought you only did that at Ring Fairs. That's true. But if I can find them elsewhere, I always have to pick one up. There was this really cool company called Daydream Dragons. I mean, right up my alley. And the artist there makes these like clay dragons. Most of them were dice holders. Some of them were just regular sculptures. And it was really actually hard to narrow it down because there were so many different colors. But even in the same color, because they're handmade, each dragon was different. So then you had to like look them over and it's like, each one literally felt like it had a personality, even though it was just the same color dragon. So I chose this one that had some gears to it and I really just love the coloring and I love the detail. I mean, it's very faint, but there's, you know, some, some scales on the chest and everything. Just super, super cute. You know, stuff like this is a great example that even at a gaming convention, you can find stuff that aren't exactly conventional. So if you're not totally into games, but maybe you're there with someone who is, there's still gonna be some cool stuff mm -hmm. for you to find too. This buy was kind of funny because uh, of all people, my wife was telling me to go ahead and do this. <laughs> Which e really impressed 8-Bit Glitch. Yeah, even 8-Bit Glitch was like, dude, you, you need to get that. So first of all, I got a PS3 game. This is a Japanese game, but it is Blades of Time. I've never seen anything about this game, not even a trailer, but just going off of how it looked on the back, it looked really interesting. A new style of gameplay with Time Rewind. Fight alongside a copy of your past self. Unlock the mysteries of this world. You attack with dual blades. You cast spells. You clear areas with your gun. I mean, there's almost a God of War feel to this. Yeah. But that was cool, really caught my eye. And I bundled that with the thing that, again, shocked 8-bit glitch and that she was pushing, you know, <laughs> just go for it, go for it. So I like my, I like my weird stuff. Well, I got a 3DO game. This is Immortal Desire, although I, I don't think it's a game. I think this is a mommy daddy movie. I'm trying to figure out who's prettier on the cover. <laughs> yeah, oh, probably that long haired guy right in the middle. Hello. <laughs> on the back, it uh, talks about the story of a young woman who a is story. searching for her spiritual identity is taken on a supernatural odyssey back in time. A breakthrough in adult entertainment. <laughs> You've got some pictures of uh, some other offerings that they put out. But the reason, honestly, I was so interested in this is because of the story behind the 3DO. The fact that it was slated to be a multimedia machine. Yeah. Now, people love to point out how much the 3DO cost back in the day, which was, I believe, like $700. And I mean, that's, that's a lot of money back in the 90s. <laughs> Keep in mind, it wasn't just a video game system. It was supposed to be that multimedia system for all of your musical, gaming, movie needs. It was supposed to be an all-in-one thing. Didn't really catch on. Obviously, certain industries love to adopt new technology, so naturally there were things like this for it, which makes it all the more interesting to collect for, because again, it's part of the history of the system as more than just a game machine. Although, you still may need a joystick present for this one. You weird, buddy. You're weird. One of the pickups that I got from the convention isn't 
quite from the convention, but it was while we were at the convention. Tony, back in the day, gamer, had a kick-ass backpack, <laughs> and I absolutely loved it. It was from Castlevania, the Netflix version. And I told him, he was talking about how he managed to come across it, and he's like, it was on sale, it was 10 bucks or whatever, and I go, I'll give you 15 for it. And he goes, okay. How's my backpack doing? Good. <laughs> she just gave me the button. I was like, well, I can't put this button on now. Grand champ. I have a Castlevania backpack now. <laughs> And, you know, I do love the, the, the Netflix series. It is really cool. And it's a really cool backpack. So I love having this in the collection. And I even told him, I said, if you really don't want to sell it to me, it's fine. He goes, no, <laughs> no, I just need it for the convention. And, you know, when I'm done, I never wear backpacks. So sold. It's like, <laughs> okay. So that was cool. And, I mean, hey, the fact that it comes from back in the day gamer, you know, now there's a part of him in our collection. Exactly. <laughs> we'll never get rid of this. And the other thing is a little snot wouldn't even take my 15 bucks after that. <laughs> I know. What a what a kind-hearted, giving jerk. <laughs> I want to love like the love in the notebook, the one that split the sky, man. The last thing I picked up, actually also literally was the last thing that I picked up, was this adorable little baby dragon this is probably by far my favorite thing that i picked up at the entire convention <laughs> and i didn't even pick it up this amazing gentleman here bought it for me because he knows how much i love dragons and i love plushies and this was perfect i love how cutesy it is it's just so cutesy and very whimsical and like stuffed animal like but you also have that like the texture is kind of as you know scales on it and it's felt but it's like got this realistic look to it. It looks like a baby just like it was sitting on the floor and it's looking up at you in just acquisitive like I'm I'm short so I have to look at you. And then you've got these little tiny wings that he just has not grown into yet. <laughs> he's, just, he's just so adorable and it's I love him. And I named him Millie from Milwaukee. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> I know. He's well, okay. my last pickup of the day happens to be Soul Blazer on the Super Nintendo. This is uh, the Enix game, part of the Quintet Trilogy, the first. I have played this previously, but through emulation, because this hasn't been the easiest game to track down. And it was high time to add it to the collection. Heavy hitter time. The only problem was the price tag. I'm not at that point where I'm going out there and buying up all the heavy hitters. You know, I'm, I'm still buying weird stuff. I'm, I'm in that phase. I saw this at three different booths. The first booth had it at 130. The second booth had it at 125. And this booth had it at 120. Each time I tried to wheel and deal with them, they would come down a little bit. But ultimately, I got this one for 110. Well, actually, I got it for 100 because I kept trying to get it for 100. And it seemed like I wasn't going to go for it. So <laughs> the sweetheart that Sean is, he pulls out a $10 bill and he slaps it off the I case. I mean, like, really? Because of Sean, he's an enabler. <laughs> you know me and heavy hitters. <laughs> and, I mean, he took it. He's like, there, it's $100. Now get it, Tom. <laughs> so thank you, Sean. Uh, I mean, it was more than the $10. It was that push to go for a heavy hitter. And you know, if, when it comes to heavy hitters, I mean, Sean's the guy anyway. Yeah. But uh, I finally have this in the collection. I'm very happy to have it in the collection. So again, thank you, Sean, for giving me that final push to make sure I got something really cool in there. Okay, whoo, that's, that's all of it. Uh, as I was going through the B-roll to get the closer uppers of this, I told her, I go, okay, we got too much stuff. We went crazy. We did. But uh, a lot of good stuff. I, I really love the variety of things that we have, like the oddball stuff that I was able to find. It is so, so cool. Pieces that, you know, you just never see. The little Nintendo trophies, uh, things that really speak to you. The dragons in plushy and sculpted form. Uh, the Pac-Man stuff that's near and dear to our hearts because of the whole wedding thing. You know, mm -hmm. plug, plug in that wedding. Uh, <laughs> finding some gifts for some friends. Getting gifts from friends. Yes. Wow. Uh, obviously, all of the merch, the stickers and everything. I mean, it's just, it's so cool bringing all these memories back. As you can tell, 
pretty much everything here has a story, even if it's just you're getting it because it's it's weird. <laughs> you know, that's the story. Also, check it out. There's a slime. I forgot the slime. How cute is he? He's like a little crystal slime. See, we, we love the Dragon Quest slimes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, nerdlings, please check out the other videos. Uh, there's a... MGC convention video that's just a great look at the convention as a whole as well as us talking about our experience of it all and uh, an adventure video just you know the other things we did while in Milwaukee you know hit up some restaurants with some friends yeah. we did some exploring out on our own we even got some more pickups in that as well you know outside of the convention so like comment subscribe let us know what you think of any of this stuff and uh Hit the bell so we know you're heading in and, and we can make sure the door is locked, obviously. <laughs> Don't forget to like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Go over and check us out on the Retro Refresh website. Hit, we have merchandise on Tee Public and Nerdlings if we like it. We nerd it for Cartoony Golf, the American Pie Dad, for all some gifts from JLove81, for being Lords of Swords. Of making our art alive and for trees and ton berries and dragons baby dragon bye nerdlings click 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 click